It's Chris Duker for GeekNerdNet.com. I'm really excited to be joined by gaming, TV, movie, comic writer, Jeremy Adams, the writer of writers. Hey, Jeremy. Hello. It's great to be here. Great to see you. Oh, thanks, man. Listen, I dressed up for the occasion. Ah. Uh, I had to do it. My best parallax. That's good. That's and good. I got a, oh. I got a flash one right there. You know, I had, oh, to, I, just, had, to, okay. I had to even it all out, right? In case I need a speedy getaway. That's but, so great. Uh, <laughs> I've been hanging on to these things for years. But anyway, oh, yeah. back to you. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Forgive yeah. the sound of the rings coming off. Uh, I, this is oh. not how they sound in the comics, I guarantee it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, pop, pop, pop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just all my lives going. Yeah. Uh, listen, <laughs> hey, everybody, if you don't know, uh, Jeremy Adams is the current writer on Green Lantern. It's absolutely fantastic uh, with DC. Uh, it's coming up July 24th is Flash Gordon uh, via Mad Cave Studios. It's actually their 10th anniversary year, which is pretty exciting. Uh, so why not uh, throw something flashy out there, so to speak? Uh, and that could work both ways for you, Jerry. Anyway, moving on. It's I'm just trying to get my my Marvel. I need Marvel to give me Flash Thompson. And then I've, I've got like the EGOT of flashes. Nice. Bear with nice. me for a second. For people who don't know, I'm going to go through a, a list that won't even hit everything in your wheelhouse. But, uh, you know, from TV Supernatural, uh, which is obviously we talked about in panels that we met at in Edmonton and San Francisco last year. Uh, Supernatural, the Scooby Doo crossover was one of the one of the biggest fanfares that you get to asked about from yeah. from your time doing that, and I'm sure other things too. Uh, right around Flash, Flashpoint Beyond, Mortal Kombat, DC animated films, a plethora of them. Uh, yeah. Lego movies. Uh, to to uh, I want to ask you about this uh, in a bit, or we can talk about it right away, but. I'm not a gamer, uh, forgive yeah. me, but uh, I can only do so many nerd things. <laughs> yeah. uh, but Scribble Knots Unmasked uh, <laughs> is a game you work, you worked on, and yes. the spa what? Space Kicker, the name oh, yeah. Space Kicker, is yeah. your character in that game? Is that correct? Yeah. So so they asked me, and I was working with Eric Wallace, who ended up running the Flash television show. But at the time, um, you know, I was a stay-at-home dad, and I had basically no work. And so Eric and I had to do the duty of populating the entire, There's there was like a bat computer in there. And we had to basically data entry, like everything in the DC universe into this thing. And it was, cra it was crazy. I mean, it was just, it was literally every version of everything, you know, we had to put in this bat computer. And as a uh, reward, they were like, uh, hey, one of the things we do is that we add people to the game. So we'll love to add you. And so if you typed in Jeremy Adams or you typed in Space Kicker, I would appear and I would I would drink an energy drink <laughs> and I'd start running around. And they also let me add somebody else. So I added my brother. So you could type in my brother's name and he appears in nunchucks and stuff. It was no really cool. way. That was a neat little perk that, you know, I was just doing it for a paycheck. So <laughs> that's awesome, man. Um, hey, listen, the, the list I've gone through, I know I didn't touch on everything. I apologize. Uh, oh, but uh, what's that? <laughs> I said, how dare you? <laughs> I know, I know, I'm such a jerk. <laughs> no, no. Um, and, you know, in the in the times that we've, we've got to, to meet, and like I said, I moderated a bunch of your panels over a couple of shows last year, near the end of the year. But, um, you know, one thing that, that people talk about and you talk about is uh, getting getting into comics writing. So you're no. with, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you were DC Animated Films, and then you got a call saying, hey, come on in. Uh, I think it was Dan Didio, right? It, Dan Didio? didn't call me, but I got a call that said I'm on a list and then I need to go into DC Comics. Uh, and I'm like, this is it. I've been trying to do this forever, you know? And it was me and a bunch of other animation writers. Josie Campbell was there. Megan Fitzmartin was there. Tim Sheridan was there. Um, a bunch of other people. And we went into this room and Dan Didio came in and he started telling us all about 5g and how he's going to do this thing and it was wild man it was really wild and we was really ambitious and that's the thing i love about didio he was this kind of like music man you know and i i, and I never really i never worked with him he just came in and here he is presenting the opportunity for us to write comic books and i've always wanted to do that so i'm like oh my gosh i've been close so many times so this is the this is the time i thought and um, we had to pitch some it was, for 5g we had to pitch some ideas 
and then uh and then he was let go and i was like oh man this sucks like <laughs> i was so close i was just i was close but my name was still on a on a list and i know that i was going down the route with um one editor there on doing the backup that ended up being the war uh war for uh world war superman backup about the new version of black racer but I, that wasn't really going and so what had happened was mike cotton who was the editor at the time was talking to tim sheridan and said like hey i've got this list of animation people and uh what do you know any of these people and tim's like oh i, I i'm assuming tim's telling me the truth when he says this <laughs> you don't know <laughs> but but he said hey i really like jeremy so i get a call from cotton and he said hey would you do this backup in uh, you know, Black Adam, 1 million, you know, DC 1 million Black Adam. And I was like, 100%. And that was really my first book. And I, I didn't know what I was doing. I overwrote it. But uh, I got to introduce Gold Beetle in it. And I got some really cool things like where Black Adam says, Shazam in, in the vacuum of space. And, and like, whatever used to be Earth, the magic there comes across space and hits him like it's it's non-verbal oh, and like stuff like that that i'm like oh my gosh it's amazing and uh um, <laughs> and raven you know i i i've created this character in teen titans go versus teen titans which is raven that's gotten like you know a flock of ravens is called an unkindness and so she becomes this ultra powerful uh being called the unkindness that can like absorb everything and um so awesome. i got to add to the toy box but that was my first foray into comics i was so thrilled so thrilled that's so cool man and like i mean just the the amount of characters one you get to work on yeah. two you get the liberty to create even though yes they're owned by dc and, and right. whichever companies you're working with at the time to right. be able to say hey i created this and this and this yeah. and the unkindness is super effing cool i didn't know the yeah. background on yeah. that that's awesome uh so i love that you shared that thank you yeah. uh and you know talk about you go from there. I mean, also a, a 1 million book, which yeah. was super cool. Like those DC 1 millions were just like, what did they just do? This is pretty neat. Mm -hmm. um, and and to work on that is is a, another, you know, kind of feather, I guess, right? Um, you know, I, I want to ask you really quick, when you say you overwrote your story, in, in what uh, sense was it just too long, too many pages? Did you, were there no, a lot of cuts? No, or too much dialogue. Like, And again, my first artist is Fernando Passerin, who we become very friendly and we work together a lot on The Flash. Mm -hmm. And um, you quickly realize it was something Rob Liefeld said. He, he explained, it's like, listen, comic books are a visual medium. And it's like, yeah, I can come up with a story and I can write dialogue. But like, I always have to keep in mind that I really believe that the art drives the story. Like you can't have one without the other. I really don't believe that. But at the same time, if I look back to my in my collection here behind me or in front of me, if the art didn't look good, I didn't want to read it. Yeah. I mean, I would turn it down. I mean, and half the time, like if it was like Jim Lee, X-Men or something, I would just read it, <laughs> you know, even if it was a bad story, not that there was, but I, yeah. but, <clears throat> but the art, so, so my point being that like, I didn't know, I didn't know how much Per panel, I needed to write dialogue. And if you write too much, it covers up too much of the art or you're cramming it in spaces and it's covering up other pieces of things. So I learned to be a little more sparse. And, and you know, the first script they gave me, first comic script was a Jeff John script, which is, I really like how, uh, how it's formatted in a lot of mm -hmm. ways. And I've, I've kind of added my own things as I've gone on to where it looks like a pretty pretty cool document i think and yeah. then of course my goal is always if i'm working with an artist to give them the freedom to you know they're collaborators like what do they yeah. want do they want to change something that's fine with me um mm -hmm. i i want i oftentimes like zermanico when it comes to zermanico on green lantern i'm asking him all the time like what do you want to draw what is it <laughs> that you want to do and and he wants to do jets and mechs and giant crazy things i'm like fantastic you know <laughs> so i'm always asking uh, uh my the artists i work with um like what can i do to make this more fun for you because at the end of the day i don't 
I believe that like if they're drawing something they want to draw, it's going to come out a thousand percent better. And just yeah. adding little things like in the current run of the Green Lantern, the central power battery is in Earth, but the entrance to that is in the hometown of Zermanica, you know, and adding little pieces of that like DC lore that connects to our own personal lives is super fun. Uh, in, you know, my intergalactic wrestling episode issue with Omega <laughs> Batman, I added you know, I based two of the characters, one on Jim Krieg, Kriegmeister 10, and nice. uh, one on my friend Jeremy Padauer, who uh, runs a toy company, and that's Captain Pow Tower, and, <laughs> and it was, it's super rad, you know, like, to be able yeah. to do things like that. Um, I think you know that, like, I, I put Argentina in the book because I had this really great podcast with these guys who told me about how Flash was published as a uh, flush man in Argentina. And I thought, oh my gosh, I got to put that in the book. And <laughs> I put flush man in the book, but you know, I name checked those three guys too, because yeah. dude, what else am I doing? This is super fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like seriously. Fun. I mean, I, I, you know, the one thing, the one thing that one, one of the first times I met you, you had said, you know, and I'll, I'll for just for time, but I'll speed a little bit. It, no pun intended, actually. Yeah. When someone said, do you want to write Flash? You're like, uh, of right. course I want to write the Flash. Right. Yes, where do I sign, right? So when you yeah. get that moment and you're in and you did an amazing run on it, um, you. to, you're welcome. And then and then to to all of a sudden you're on, you go from one icon yeah. to another icon, right. especially even given all the work you've done before, Icons everywhere, Jeremy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but but my point is, you go from Flash, to, you know, and then you're now you're on Green Lantern. Do you sometimes pinch yourself because you're in the comics world you want to be in? Yeah, 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 hundred percent. If comics paid more, I would just be doing this full time. Honestly, right. it's so much more fulfilling, and I have such a great time with it. And um, you know, again, I I did not think that they were going to let me. I was told very you know, honestly, when I started, especially on The Flash, they said, you'll probably only get 12 episodes, 12 issues, yeah. maybe. And I was like, oh, you know, that's 12 more than I thought, you know, that I, <laughs> 12 more I, than I thought I'd ever get. And I was, I was so pumped for it. And it was, you know, the character Wally was kind of at a low point, so be able to write him. And then just fans just really gathered around it. And I think they kept waiting for me to do something terrible to him. <laughs> But at that point in time, like so much terribleness had been done to the character. And by terrible, I mean just dramatic terribleness. So yeah. like this, this was my chance to do kind of a old school kind of Silver Age book that was fun and had, you know, fun, exciting plots and, and really dived into this family. And it and it really mirrored my own life. I mean, married with two kids very happily and, and really enjoying my this time. But yeah. with Green Lantern, you know, I'm just a human being, you know? So it's like when they asked, they told me they were gonna take me off the book of Flash, uh, I was so I was so sad yeah. um, because I had grown so attached to the characters. But in the same breath, they offered me Green Lantern and I, you know, I was going, oh no, maybe, you know, I was kind of, <laughs> like, you know, and here they are offering me one of their big books and I yeah. was just, like you know i was so sad about it you're like kicking sand okay totally no i didn't even say okay i go let me think about it which is crazy and uh wow. and i called jeff johns and and he was so pumped for me and i was like that was a boost that was kind of the shot i needed yeah and it was like two days before christmas so i remember driving up to my mother-in-law so like th within the three hour drive i immediately knew what I wanted to do for Green Lantern. And I called Paul, my editor, and he seemed really pumped about it. And so we've been having a lot of fun. It's a definitely a bigger animal to wrangle than the Flash. Yeah. There's so much mythology. There's so many moving pieces mm -hmm. that um, it was incredibly intimidating. So, uh, you know, it is an icon and I just yeah. hope, I'm really glad people are along for the ride, but um, it's just going to get crazier and crazier as we get, toward you know the, the fall oh dude um, i'm sorry yeah. i was gonna say your run brought me back to green lantern 
Oh, cool. That I, I, you know, you, you kind of like there's there's so many comics to read, and I'm lucky enough, oh, yeah. enough to be able to read a lot of them. Uh, with my own hard-earned totally. cash, by the way, just sort of clear. Right. Well, <laughs> but, hey, same with me. They don't send me free ones. I mean, they <laughs> send me my own free ones, but everything else yeah. I have to pay for. <laughs> right. So I was I was going to say no, but seriously. Uh, so thanks for bringing me back to GL. Um, yeah. And spoiler alert to anyone watching, listening. Uh, spoiler alert. But the one you had mentioned it already. The one thing I loved is the power battery on Earth. Right. I'm like, I, I'm like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> this is so awesome. uh, it was so fun and unexpected. Thank you. Dude, and and, and like, I, because I'm such a nerd, is like, I had to tie it into Millennium. You know, like, there's like weird, <laughs> the BC lore that I'm like, oh, let's bring back Tom Kalamaku. Originally, I tried to bring back Floronic Man, but they wouldn't let me oh. uh, bring Floronic Man and Tom Kalamaku because they both were part of the New Guardians. But that's because another book was using Floronic Man, I think. Um, so, but, but I, I'm thrilled. Like I said, they're yeah. letting me play with a bunch of things and try to do the surprises and try to do little twists and things, you know, because it's hard. It's hard. It's like Jeff, uh, Johns and Tomasi and Venditti, they've really explored the universe and yeah. with Jeff creating all the other emotional spectrums, it makes, it makes it difficult to figure out where to go. I think I know I mean, I know where I want to go and yeah. I, I'm excited to kind of like finish off the second half of this story yeah. in a way yeah. and then see where we'll go from there. Well, you li like you literally have power batteries blowing up on planets. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I can just imagine and, you know, I, I, essentially heroes falling from the sky, right? Right. Or villains. Right. Uh, like, holy crap. Like just the, the magnitude of it behind Oh my God, that exploded. And then, oh my God, that exploded. Right. right. <laughs> and the ripple effect, right, um, is bonkers. I love it. I'm here for it. Um, but, you know, I, I want to say one thing I, um, uh, quickly uh, that I met, thought of earlier. I love the fact that you and your pal, Tim Sheridan, yep. you know, you guys, you're went from animated and now you're, you're both writing comics and, yep. Just out today is, uh, as of today is uh, Alan Scott Green Lantern number six. Yeah, one, um, yeah, like pretty cool stuff that you're both you're both on yeah. GLs and at the same time. Yeah, right. Pretty well, neat stuff. Done, and and that, Tim and I kind of have had very parallel lives, you know, as far as like career path. Not yeah. not specifically, but like it's we entered comics at the same time. We have this animation background. It's been. It's been really good. I mean, we're really good friends. We talk all the time. And um, and so when we did Flashpoint Beyond, you know, Tim and I had come up with what we thought would be Flashpoint Beyond. And it was totally different than what it ended up being. Mm -hmm. and, and Cotton was like, hey, let's let's call Jeff. This is his world. And we're like, Jeff who? You know, <laughs> John's. We're like, what? And so we met <laughs> at a steakhouse and for the first time. And he could not be a kinder person and I kept thinking because you hear stories you hear people that are like oh I hate that guy or people I love that guy which is basically like the internet right yeah and, and you can only you know like cover your real self for so long yeah and uh and Tim and I just kept thinking like this guy's the nicest guy like he's impossibly nice and he's impossibly kind and he's impossibly giving and um, and I just, I cannot appreciate that enough. And I grew up reading so many of his comics and he's not even that much older than me. And I, <laughs> you know, I, I read so many of his comics. So Tim and I in a room doing Flashpoint Beyond. And not only did we, we scrapped the idea that Tim and I were gonna do, we all came up with another idea together. But like two issues in, we had like started writing it and Jeff comes in, we gotta, we, he's, we gotta, we gotta get rid of this, we gotta stop. And, and I'm like, what is going on? And he was just very much like, what is this about? And he made us really drill down in it. And I can't, I mean, I'm so grateful because he made it so much of a, a deeper story. So anyways, Timmy and Jeff working on that thing. Tim and I obviously, you know, work totally different when it comes to writing. And um, at the end, Jeff was like, oh, you should do Jay Garrick and you should do Alan Scott and Venditti. You know, you got to do Sandman for this new Golden Age pitch he had. And we're like, oh my gosh, absolutely. But yeah, <laughs> Tim and I are really good friends. And, 
And like I said, we couldn't, we could not come at comic books in the world differently. But um, you know, it's a testament to just being writers and just being willing to, you know, be friends with people that are that that have different points of view. And but like I said, even the right, even the way we write. Jeff and Tim definitely come at story emotion first. Like, what is this about emotionally? And I mm -hmm. do the opposite. I come at it like completely from plot and and then, you know, and then bring in the character and they come at emotion and then bring in the plot. And so we have to end at the same place. But yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's super, super awesome, fun. dude. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I want I want to just for I apologize, matter of time, but no, you're keep going. I'm sorry, I ramble. Okay, you know. all right, good. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to stop you. Uh, I, I, I was going to say too. I, I'm going to jump over for a sec. Flash, Green Lantern. Now, Flash Gordon. Yeah. Uh, you know the if 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 anyone missed it, the free comic book day issue issue zero is fantastic. Go find it. It's it should it's be stellar. it's going to be on digital soon. Like, okay, good. So that'll be good. Nice, nice. And then so you've got so. You land Flash Gordon. It's coming out July twenty fourth this year, twenty fourth, twenty twenty four, which is which is awesome. Uh, and then it's from uh, it's from Mad Cave, and they're yeah. in their tenth year. How did this come about for you? What, like, what did was it just hey, I want to do this, and I pitched it, or did they come no, to you? No, I I, uh, I know Mike Martz. Uh, Mike Martz, uh, who is kind of the head honcho over there right now he had been the editor on x-men and the editor on batman and all this stuff and I, a long time ago many 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 moons ago over 12 years ago probably i was going to new york for my first time first trip to manhattan and i was working at a toy company and this woman there was like oh i know a guy that works at marvel his name is mike martz maybe he can give you a tour i was like oh my gosh that'd be amazing <laughs> i was like <clears throat> so giddy about it and we're getting ready to leave for New York. And Mike was like, oh, I can't give you a tour. Uh, I, I'm too busy. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm crushed. But I'm pretty persistent. And I was like, uh, you know, I kept up with him. And I would ask him questions and stuff. And then eventually he was the first person that let me pitch on a book. He had moved over to DC. And my the first book I ever pitched on was probably over a decade ago. And I pitched a Batwing title. Cool. Um, it ended up going to Ward Ellis. I mean, come on you know but but uh, oh, you're that right. guy yeah so i pitched it and um he really liked to pitch so we just kept up and um and through his he moved to different companies and stuff so i was at a convention and i was asking joe casada uh, because i'm such a nerd i'm like talking to everybody and i'm and casada's a hero i i think his run at marvel was just unparalleled and he said hey you should pitch something to mad cave and i was like mad cave he goes yeah uh my friend mike martz is like oh martz is over there now so i texted <laughs> mike and had a call uh zoom where i was i was pitching him some of my own creator own stuff and he said oh we're kind of interested in these and he goes but we also have some ip if you're if you're interested in here mm -hmm. i go well, what do you have and he starts rattling off and he said flash gordon i go i'll do Fra flash gordon nice and he goes, he goes, you will? I go, yeah. And he goes, it's yours. And I was like, oh. And so I said, <laughs> he's like, can you come up with like, you know, a pitch? You know, I was like, yeah. So the next day I sent him like, this is what I do. And he was like, oh, great. Awesome. And that was how quick it was. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so so um, I I just, uh, I'm implementing my pitch. And uh, again, it's it's weird because we had to pause a little bit and and I'm trying to, you know, for me, it takes a bit to wrap my head around the character. With Wally, it took me, it took me to look at Wally through other people's eyes in that first arc to really figure out who I thought Wally was. Right. And with, with Hal Jordan, it's the same. I, I still don't think I necessarily have a perfect handle on Hal. And um, the same thing with Flash, you know, trying mm -hmm. to figure I'm just trying to pour all my pulpy sci-fi motives into flash gordon and i love pulp sci-fi i'm a big edgar rice burroughs fan and the john yeah. mars series was so great for me but reading a bunch of old pulp sci-fi and pulp books have been great because there's just like we don't worry about science so much you yeah. know it's like is it cool you know like i have this guy that he comes in and his fingers are all syringes and this, you know, the syringes pop off and crawl over to people. I'm like, that's <laughs> the type of stuff that I'm like, yeah, that's great. Yeah. You know? Wicked. I love it. 
Yeah, Will Connor uh, is killing it on art, so I'm lucky. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. Book. Yeah, like I can't, I can't wait yeah. to see you know the rest of it. Um, yeah. I want to, I want to ask you because I, I <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, um, I don't want to forget. I absolutely love because my, you know, I have a daughter and uh, she's a bit older than your daughter and that you have in your unboxing videos, yeah. <laughs> which by the way, are the most, are seriously, the first time I saw one of them, and I think I told you this back in San Francisco, but the first time I saw one, it was the most genuine thing I'd seen. I'm like, now this is how you do an unboxing video. Like it, <laughs> it's just, you guys are just having a blast. It's so yeah. fun. Yeah. So, you my know. oldest is very like serious about it. My youngest is chaos, like absolute chaos personified. <laughs> And they they switch off and uh, and it's fun, but you know what? They're getting I can tell they're getting bored with it, and I'm just like, yeah. it's fun. You don't have to, do it, <laughs> you know. As I as a tear drops from my face, <laughs> I think the allowance has to go up at that point. Yeah, <laughs> if, totally. there's, if there's allowance, but yeah, <laughs> right. So well, we could write another comic, but <laughs> yeah. oh, it's great. Reel them in that way. Oh man, well, um, I mean, I I wrote one. I wrote one flash with Charlotte. And McKinsey and I uh, have to write a comic together. And she reminds me all the time uh, that we have to write one together. And I and I absolutely will. But it's hard because with Flash, the way that I organized Flash was it was less serialized. I mean, it was serialized in, in a kind of a macro point of view. But the arcs were always like three to four issues each. And then I would do like two one-offs. And then I go three to four issues each. Which I actually think is I probably should have done that in Green Lantern. But I was telling a bigger story. Yeah. And, and there's crossovers and all sorts of stuff. So at some point, me and Miss uh, Miss McKenzie are going to uh, do a book together. She just wants the money, honestly. hundred <laughs> percent. I, I absolutely love it, man. I absolutely love it. Um, and you you also have an issue uh, in Absolute Power coming out later this summer, yeah. correct? Oh, well, I'm excited. Uh, about it. Yeah, yeah. T uh, tell me a bit about that. Sorry. Yeah, so uh, I'm the Mikey likes it comic books. So, you know, I'm constantly, if they ask me to do something, I'm like 100%. You know, I don't yeah. think it's me going like, nah. It's always like, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, and in fact, I'm always like, and here's three more pitches that you're going to ignore. <laughs> so, <laughs> but they said, hey, we're doing this crossover. We have this kind of name. And for those that don't know, there are these, there are these robots. I don't want to give too much away. Yeah. But um, I was like, oh, what if, because we're dealing with Green Lantern and we're dealing with Alan Scott, but we're dealing with Green Lantern, we're dealing with Will, and I was taking a cues and I would have a conversation with Tim about kind of like some of the things he introduced in Alan Scott and where he left Alan Scott and kind of ruminating on that. Mm -hmm. And I think I came up with a really fun one-off story, but it's not just a one-off story the character in it, some of the, some of the things in it are going to spill over into Green Lantern proper. And um, I'm really excited about that. Nice. So it, you just made me go, ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's true. And and like really cool, really, really cool. Uh, yeah, I can't say much more, but I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited about uh, the way it's going to spill over and introduce kind of a new character into the Green Lantern universe, you know? That's super cool, man. Um, listen, Jeremy, I want to do a part two of this, yes. uh, if we can, uh, thank you so much for thank taking you. time, making yes. time. Thanks for all the creative work you do. Uh, because as you know, I do love your work and, um, and I can't wait to hopefully, uh, moderate you at another panel, but before that we'll do another one of these chats because I want to, I want to catch up more as we get into more flash Gordon stuff and then more Absolute awesome. power stuff. Uh, and then if people need to find you, they can find you on the socials at space kicker, one word, correct? That's correct. And uh, yeah, Jeremy Adams, thank you so much, man. Thank you, Chris. Love it. Always. Awesome, dude. Thanks.